Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop. It is fantastic to have you here because we're embarking on another project, another education in the craft of knife making, which I am thoroughly excited by. I've got a lot to learn, and it is a pleasure to bring you along as we make this Turkish twist. Damascus steel integral guard Bowie knife. Thank you. Thank you also to Squarespace for sponsoring this episode. It's an incredibly powerful and unbelievably simple to use website building platform that I use and love. So thank you Squarespace because they are giving you guys 10% off your first purchase and a free trial, which means that you can try it for free, see how much you love it, and then finally sign up while getting that little 10% discount. Great way to support the show too. Thank you Squarespace. Let's get it right into finishing up this Damascus. So here's what we left off last night. We have these pieces surface ground up. This is obviously our Turkish twist. You can see that we have it ground on two sides so that our mating surfaces are very clean as we weld it together. But now that it's the morning and I got fresh eyes, I'm looking at this and I'm seeing, well, actually those twists, we haven't ground all the way through them. And something like this could easily form an inclusion that severely damages the integrity of the blade. So real fast, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dress up this stone since we've used it a lot and it'll be slightly clogged. And then we're gonna throw these back on here and we're gonna take some more off it real fast. Now that it's flat, we can take heavier passes because it's sticking more. Hopefully this doesn't take the three hours it took last night. Hopefully, doggily, so now I've got those pieces of surface ground up and I'm pleased I have because it means that I can guarantee the consistency and cleanliness of these mating surfaces because we are ready to tack weld this together so that it's staying put while we go into the forge and while we start setting the forge weld. She's cool, it's time to grind through the scale, grind through the twists, get down to clean material, and see what we've got. Got it ground, it's now time for us to put it in the, f oh, that's silly, overfilled the ferric. <laughs> Whoops. Whoa! Now that is cool. Right, into the baking soda. Huh. Thankfully we didn't spill that one. Into the water. Let's have a look. Now I am pretty happy with that. That patterning has come out so Awesomely, I believe this is called a Turkish twist pattern, not a herringbone pattern. Either way, that just looks amazing. And it's very much different to that pattern that we made with the W's a few days ago, where we had a huge amount more layers. There we would have had probably 10 times as many layers, so if we compare this and that, You'll note the lines are much bolder here, and I quite like that. I think that works better for the intentional herringbone like this. We don't have starbursts, but we were aware of that. We've got something rather fabulous anyway, but there is an issue. Let me grab a micrometer. That's a joke. These will do. 16.75 millimeters thick. 660,000. Well, it's not quite as thick as I need this to be. So let me run you through what it is that I was planning to do. I'm planning to take a piece of rectangular bar, like so. Reduce it in cross section this way, from here to here, then reduce it from here to here. Do the same back here to form some material for the tang, and have plenty of material to pinch that out into our guard, and forge the blade, Bell's blade, out of this. Now since this right here needs to nice and cleanly 
flow into our finished handle shape. This needs to be the width of the handle that we want, plus at least two millimeters. Now you remember, on that piece of steel currently, we got about 660 thou of width. Here, as an example, is that four Jennifer knife I made that broke. Flashback. Well, it is 770 thou. Don't worry, got your back, Europeans. 19.67 mil. As you heard me say a couple of seconds ago, we need our final width plus two. Why? Forge scale. We've got to break through the forge scale and make it nice and clean and polished. We also have to account for the fact that in the forging process, we might not get the blade and the tang perfectly straight and we'll need to grind our guard area into the center. In the efforts of being bilingual with measurement systems, when I say two millimeters, I mean two millimeters is 80 thou. Now I know what you're saying, well Alec, you've got all this width here. You know, you've almost got two whole inches of width, 47 and a half mil wide. Can't you just forge it down and then help it bulk out? Well, in order to make forging out the guard easiest, I'm relying on this width being there already. So if I narrow that down, Oh no. It's alright, they're my cheap pair. If I narrow this down too much, I will then struggle forging out the guard. In fact, this is all leading up to me, I've got a test piece in the fire, it's all leading up to me just, you know, doing that little test. I'm not even sure it's gonna be possible at all to get enough extra width without compromising the ease of forging the guard. Yeah, I think we might be in a real pickle. We may as well just test it out. Okay, so these two are now about the same size. Same thickness, same kind of width. I'm gonna take that test piece, hit it down this way, and see if we move a quarter inch down, how much thickness we gain. I don't think it's gonna be enough. Give it one more hard blow. Right, that's more than a quarter inch. I'm gonna simulate forging the isolation. Right, so here's what we ended up with. It's 19.35 millimeters thick. So we gained three millimeters in width, but we lost a whole 10 millimeters. So for 100 thou of extra width, it costs us about 350 thou this way. The trouble with that is, if I want this to be my Ricasso and to forge my blade out, I mean, it's impossible. There's no way we can get in there and pull that guard out. We need every bit of width that we can to be able to do that. We don't have the amount of meat that we need on this thing to get anywhere close to executing what it is that we want to execute. That meat, oh, oh, there's an idea. Why didn't I think of it? Maybe that's what I, oh, hello. What was I thinking? I meant to be a blacksmith. You know, it's amazing. I always kind of figured, Blacksmithing would be like riding a bike. You know, you learn it and you don't really forget a whole lot. I'm amazed as to how much I've forgotten. I forgot about an entire blacksmithing process. I've forgotten about an awesomely fun tool. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna lock that puppy in a vise. We're gonna give it the good old Scottish heat and beat. Right, here we go. Oh, my torch is falling apart. Oh boy. And we continue.
basically here is where we're at to after about two hours of upsetting that we have put on a decent bit of weight onto our stock it's not Ah, it's not super duper crisp though. It seems to upset a lot easier in that direction than it does in this direction. What I'm gonna do now is we're gonna sacrifice some of that longitudinal width that we've created for the lateral width that we really, really need. We need a lot of, blah, but we need it all. But I'm gonna take a quarter inch off this to give me an extra little bit. I forgot the maths that I did. Anyway, let's heat it up, turn on the hammer, and we'll give it a whack. Right, let's try and isolate the tang. Oh, I just messed up big time. I really messed up. Oh no. I just compromised some of that section that I had just thickened up. Spent a massive amount of time thickening it up and I put it in the dies. I should have, should have thought more. All it takes is just a smidge of carelessness. Oh! I'm not sure if I'm flogging a dead horse at this point. I want that guard area as thick as possible. And the trouble is, now that it's isolated, I can't push the material back any further. Overall, promising, promising. I, we might have enough material. Okay, it's looking promising. I think we might make it. We got a good bit of bulk. We're an inch wide, and at its narrowest point, we're still over seven eighths, which should be more than enough. It's this meat right in here that I want to be preserving. So I've got to be really careful to not mess up like I did yesterday and reduce the material where we need it. I would much rather put myself in the position to have to do more grinding than to have to completely start over. And I don't think starting over is in the cards just right yet. We'll see. Now, we're gonna take this material here that is our tang and we're gonna break it down and work in some isolations, roughly, with plenty of clearance material. And we're gonna do that under the green hammer. Okay, so I'm just inching my way through here. But something I'm noticing as I broke that down, it looks like it's just a little twisted out of alignment. So, in order to work out if my eyes are deceiving me or if it is twisted, I'm gonna try and brush it. Man, it's, it's crusty. Taking so much time, the scale is crusty. And I'm gonna work my reference surfaces here at the guard. You know, I'm trying to make something that's nice and neat and square and straight. And so I've gotta have good baselines to work off of. I gotta have good reference planes that I'm referencing. I'm gonna lock it in at the guard. I'm coming up from above and I'm gonna sight down it. I've got a twist of a few degrees. I'm gonna come in here with my twisting wrench and try and sort that out. It's a little better. There we go. Oh, ah, uh, yeah, hey. uh, how are we looking this way up? Let's have a look-see. Oh, we're twisted this way too. So we're gonna take a heat and fix that. All right, let's lock it in. I think that's about okay. What I now want to see is how centered we are to the guard with this material before we even think about forging down the blade. We need to come this way. In we go. And with the hammer. Have a look-see. Oh, this is better than using a wrench even for twisting. This is good. Right, let's have a look. Are we central? Nah, that's, it's twisted right at the base. Great, that's starting to look good. Woo! What is next? So I need to straighten out these little wings. So I'm gonna do that like this with a fuller. I don't wanna be hitting up here because I'm gonna risk bending 
all of that. Now I need to forge my Rakasa. We've currently got this. What we need is we need to form our Rakasa. Top tip, this area here, I think this area here is called the Rakasa. Now, this wants to end up being three quarters of an inch, no more than an inch. But bear in mind, we're currently dealing with very thick material. So my thinking is, we make a very narrow indentation. When we draw down this section to half the width for the finished Bowie, this will extend twice, and we'll also be grinding into the guard to extend that Ricasso area. So that's why I'm going to use this. This is some one by 5 sixteenths material, 25 by eight. Now, just because of whatever, forging unevenly, this tang is off center to the material for the blade. That's actually a good little happy accident, and we can make some wonderful trees out of that happy accident because we want the blade offset anyway, so we're gonna forge in here so that our offset is biased towards the side of the edge. Progress, that's working. Okay, so I actually just ran into the grinding room and I cleaned up the shoulders a little bit with an angle grinder. And that there is the basis of the preform for the back half of the knife. So here's where we're at. We have an 11 inch piece of material for a 10 inch blade. The material is 5 eighths of an inch thick, which means, okay, at the end we probably want to be about 5 sixteenths of an inch, which is half a 5 eighths. 16 millimeters, eight millimeters. But we do want extra width. If we didn't want extra width, we could pretty easily say, cut five inches, it'll draw out to 10 inches. But we do want extra width, and I'm probably gonna make some sort of mistake. Scale losses has got to be factored into it. So I'm gonna say, halving the thickness doesn't double the length here. In fact, it's, let's say, one and a half times the length. So this needs to be cut at seven and a half inches for us to be able to make a 10 inch blade. Oh, you know it'd be cool. Yeah, this would be awesome. We're gonna do one step better. Oh yes, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna cut it at eight and three quarter inches and we're gonna do something special. Do you remember when I made this? This is the Scottish Claymore. You remember here at the tip of the Scottish Claymore, we did a fish mouth cut. Our pattern was like this. We cut a V out of the tip and then forge welded it into the point of the blade so the pattern wrapped around the central core. Oh, this is exciting. We are going to do the exact same thing. Ho 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 ho! Oh! The exact same thing on this. Woohoo! So I've got that V cut out ready for us to fold that back down, forge weld it together and start drawing out the blade. On the next episode, I wanna thank today's sponsor, Squarespace, because they make building a website far less difficult than trying to do this. It is a fabulously simple website building platform that means that you can get your brand out there, your message out there, what it is that you wanna share with the world. You can get it out there quickly, inexpensively, and you can have full control over it. When you go to squarespace.com forward slash forge, you're gonna be able to get that free trial so that today you can start building that website and then once you decide well actually yes having a website is great and it is beautiful because it's built with Squarespace you're gonna get 10% off your first purchase with them I love using Squarespace my website alexdealblacksmith.com is Squarespace it's a fantastic platform brilliant 24-7 customer service make sure to hit up squarespace.com forward slash forward for that free trial and 10% discount thank you Squarespace for sponsoring the show thank you guys for being here I'm gonna see you on the very next episode bye bye